Let's get right back to action. We go to view and layer settings. I only activate the bottom and pad layers. This is the final design which will later be on our Cooper. Time to print, but what paper? At first I used this premium glossy photo paper from Epson, which is total bullshit. It looks nice on the paper, but it is horrible to transfer and I failed like 4 times. Better just use a glossy paper from a magazine. I taped one to this piece of paper and printed the design. Here are the settings from the print. And it has to be a laser printer. I used the Dell C1660W. Now I used scissors to cut the design smaller and afterwards marked the outline on my Cooper board. I used a saw to give my board the custom size. But a Dremel does also work fine, just a bit loud. Time to clean the Cooper layer. At first I used really fine sandpaper until the layer shines nicely. Afterwards I used some acetone to get rid of the last layer of fat. And by the way, it is a good time to open the window when working with chemicals. Here comes the hardcore part. Transferring the toner to the board. Lay your board on your surface and cover it up with your design. Toner face down of course. Use a piece of aluminum foil as a blanket and make sure that the design is still in its place. Get your iron. I used the heat level 3, which should be called hotter than hell, and just press it on top for about 30 seconds. Now you can start moving it around a bit. The aluminum foil will help the iron to glide over the whole construction. I pressed on the board for around 6 minutes. Then it is time to drop the board in soapy water. Let it sit for a couple minutes and start removing the paper slowly. And it's done. Looks okay, I guess. But don't cry when there are small holes or gaps. Just use a sharpie to cover those up. I used iron 3 chloride for etching and it gets messy, so put a piece of cardboard underneath. And be sure to wear gloves and always stay calm. I used a sponge and just gently scrub the Cooper layer away. It takes some time, but not longer than 10 minutes. Now this looks great. I cleaned up my mess and used some acetone in the end to get rid of the toner. Almost done. Only thing left are the holes. I used my Dremel and a 0.8mm drill to make all the holes. Afterwards I had to use a 1.2mm drill to make the holes bigger for the terminals, the MOSFET and the diodes. Here comes the best part, soldering all components to the board. And it is useful to have the complete board design next to you, because we can't see which part is where on the board. And that's it. The test was also successful with an almost 5 meter long blue LED strip. Making your own board is not impossible and really rewarding. I hope you like this project. If so, don't forget to like, leave me ideas for next projects and I will see you next time.